<laughs> Hello and welcome to Story Driven Product Demos, where we will learn to scale the dream with slides. We are really excited to be here. I'm Molly Gagan, one half of the Presentation Thinking Podcast with my co-host, Mikey Maduski, where we talk about presentations, think about what makes them good from great, obsess over storytelling. You get it if you've listened. You can tune in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you stream podcasts. And this project was kind of inspired by one of the original presentation goats, we think, <laughs> William Shakespeare. And these four pillars, <clears throat> strategy, science, art, and delivery, have really honed and driven our niche. And when we, when we discuss any of these topics, fine art, graphic design, data science, we try and make sense of how they intersect with each other and often lean on each other to be more effective and powerful. And this has ultimately brought us these conversations to where we all are right now, the first ever Thank you, Mikey. Storyteller <laughs> Study Club. And this is truly an opportunity for us to put into practice what we've learned, what we preach, and also just share knowledge and learn from each other. So we love the TED Talk format where an expert presenter delivers a tight 18 minutes of content. And we want to respect and get, um, you know, get some time for executive leadership people that are really busy. So we've challenged ourselves to put our own content into an 18 minute format, add 10 minutes for this, you know, lovely intro I'm providing you with, as well as Q&A, of course. So you should have a Q&A box on the bottom of your Zoom. Please throw in questions throughout the presentation today, and we will try to get through as many as we can at the end. And yes, this is being recorded if you're just now joining, and you will get um, the presentation delivered sometime this week as well. So um, today we're talking about demos, and if you're in marketing of any kind, you have worked with or needed these in your day-to-day -day life. And you might also know they can get super stale on, even if they're not, they might lack personalization or storytelling and to be truly effective. So there's no better person to help with this than CEO and founder of Ghost Ranch Communications, Mikey Maduski. He's here with us. <laughs> and just some credential list, you know, Mikey's got an MFA in advertising uh, uh, design from Savannah College of Art and Design. And prior to founding Ghost Ranch, he spent time in brand management at Activision, um, he's worked as a marketing designer for SaaS startup Compendium Blogware and also spent time on the agency side at BBDO. So he has a holistic view of the presentation world, and I truly don't know anyone more obsessed with presentations. He truly lives and breathes at the center of, you know, design, storytelling, and business, hence the birth of Ghost Ranch Communications. So now a presentation about presentations. Mikey, take it away. Molly, too kind. Thank you. I love seeing all these Beautiful names in, in the audience. I wish I could see you, um, but uh, let's get going because we want to stay true to our, our attempt at the world's first 28-minute webinar, uh, but we will hang out if you have any QA and, and the discussion goes longer. Uh, so that is not me up on a big stage. Uh, I am far more comfortable with my team and I behind the scenes. We are presentation designers and nerds and experts who who love and are super weirdly passionate about making our clients look awesome when they're up there giving uh, awesome presentations. And so as such, you know, like we spend our, our living, breathing hours thinking about presentations, designing them from the first call decks to second call, drill down decks, industry decks, cab decks, go to market stuff, you name it. We think a lot about presentations and I have a presentation service announcement. There's one type of, of presentation that I don't get think gets the same love and tenderness as some of the other ones that I just discussed. Demos. So you're here because obviously you think about product demos, maybe you're involved in, in building them. We know it's that rare chance for, for uh, us to, to show our audience, like what can our product, our tool, our suite do for them in their, in their, uh, in their job to be done, right? Like they're on a mission and it's our chance to take them on a journey right? To show them like, all right, this product is actually sweet and you need it. Unfortunately, I think what we see lately and, and what we see like for the large part is that our product demos don't get quite the same like strate strategy or like creativity that's thrown into say like a first call deck, which we know is also very important. Um, and, and demos are really important. And I'd say like, according to Chris Lynch, chief marketing officer at MindTickle, you know, we just had a recent discussion on the product marketing insider podcast and to Chris, demos are still and still important, maybe even more so because as he pointed out, 
you know, the buying journey has changed. So back in the day, you know, we used to be able to, to really like guide our buyers through the, through the journey, whether you're on the funnel or the bow tie or, you know, some kind of cycle thing, uh, whatever it is, you know, we have to get the, the prospect through the, through the journey to the point of purchase. Right. And back in the day, we could guide them, educate them, get them pretty stoked about our benefits and what we do. And then when it was like, all right, looks like they're going to buy, you know, let's, let's build a demo because building a demo environment can be pretty cumbersome and pretty involved and pretty technical. So, you know, back then we'd, you'd pull in the sales consultant, solution engineer, what have you, and they would build it today though, as Chris pointed out, and probably as, as some of you have experienced buyers are coming in, and they've educated themselves. They've probably already narrowed things down to a couple options. And now they want to see what separates your product from some of the others that they're vetting, right? And so they're ready to see the product sooner in the funnel. And that's a proposition that probably freaks a lot of you out, right? Because uh, because truly giving a demo can be a total hit or miss, all right, depending on who's giving it. You all probably, you know, we've heard, we've got some clients who have like the one demo person who, you know, super technical, charismatic, they, they practically, you know, gave birth to the product. They know it so well, and they know the unique pain points of all those, uh, all the, uh, everyone in uh, listening in. So, um, but when you think about giving, giving that duty to a BDR or something like that, it's probably a little troublesome and, and worrisome because you don't want them to go off script. And if, even if there is a script, you, you know, they may fall victim to the point and click demo and just kind of start wandering around and, you know, showing buttons and that kind of thing. And, Demos are straight up, like they are just cumbersome and, and pretty demanding. And I think what happens is there's a lot of bottlenecks involved and we're seeing like two, two outcomes of that. Um, first, ge uh, more generic demos, all right? Like, so sort of a one size fits most because they're kind of a, a pain to create. Uh, so we try to create something a little more generic that's going to appeal to most of our personas, right? And then the second of all, we are too focused on the how, rather than the why. And that's problematic, but we're going to talk about some some ways to get around this stuff. So first of all, what's the big deal? Why does it matter if if our uh, if our demos are a little more, you know, one size fits most? Um, kind of goes back to that idea of what Dale Carnegie said, like to us, you know, our own name is super important. It's the sweetest sound of any language. Uh, over the years, as we studied and worked with great presenters, we've seen this like awesome shift towards more audience centric presentations. Um, and it's really about, you know, like you've heard it a million times. It's it's about making sure the the audience is the hero, not you, not your product. And it's because, you know, uh, psychologists and, and neuroscientists have pointed out we care about ourselves. As you're listening to this, to me today, you're wondering like, all right, what's what's this guy got for me? Like, how can this this presentation help me with what I'm trying to do. And so even if it's not, if I can't go, you know, name for name and, and call you each out to tailor this presentation, maybe I can think about your title or the geography or like sort of the vertical that you represent. But most importantly, I'd say is even what is the mission that you're on? Like what goal are you trying to accomplish, right? Your job to be done. Um, Three out of four of us expect personalization these days, according to McKinsey, and about the same amount, if not more, are frustrated when we don't find it. And I can tell you who was frustrated to the tune of $14 billion when Nike didn't tailor their pitch to him when they tried to re-sign his endorsement deal was Steph Curry. According to presentation lore, uh, somebody left uh, Kevin Durant's imagery from another PowerPoint in the Steph Curry pitch deck. And honestly, it sounds like he just tuned out, uh, didn't feel like they were tailoring the message to him uh, or making him feel seen and heard. And Under Armour swooped in and, you know, scooped him up. And I can guarantee they personalized that presentation. Um, personalization these days, you know, according to Jesse Johnson at Forrester is table stakes. It's no longer a nice to have. It's essential. Okay. And the good news though, is that if you do implement it, you can earn 40% more revenue uh, through personalization. So I think hopefully we can get to a, a place where we can all agree personalization is good. And even like tiny little touches can go a long way to help a prospect be seen. So you're going to see why I say that later, because we want you to start building demos that are a little more personalizable, customizable. All right. So, so what's, what's the deal with selling the how and not the why um, this you'll, you've probably seen quite a few, uh, product demos that are more of those like real estate tours, but I want to show you a little glimpse. Does anybody remember uh, this scene from a Hollywood film circa 1993? 
you can throw it in the chat if, if so. Okay, Patrick Howe, thank you. Nailed it. Okay, does anybody remember this scene and the way that it made you feel when they're like hanging out in that car and the guy's like, he's like, are they trying to turn the power on? And you hear this thump and you see the, you see the, the rings in the water. It kind of moves you and you feel it. I felt it. And I remember my grandma sitting next to me, like, you know, jumping when they finally show that goat leg on top of the car. Um, so Jurassic Park, pretty cool movie. Um, 1993 Spielberg, about two hours, seven minutes long. Does anybody know how many, it's a movie about dinosaur, dinosaurs, first of all, right? Does anybody know how much time actual, how much actual dinosaur footage there is in the film? Kit McCauley nailed it 15 minutes, about 10% of the film about dinosaurs shows actual dinosaurs, right? And it was a recipe for success. Three Academy Awards smashed the box office sales, right? At the time, highest grossing film ever at the time. Uh, nearly a billion dollars in its uh, for initial theatrical debut. A lot of us are marketers here, right? Like we like to attribute things. So that those 15 minutes of dino footage, let's uh, let's call that 108 million dollars. Uh, where what would we call that other 806 million dollars? Um, I like to call it emotional storytelling. Or you know, if the if the dino footage is the how or the what. You know, the emotional, the feeling that we get from watching that film, uh, the the buildups and the lead ups to some of those moments is the stuff that we felt in our in our gut. Right. That's the why. That's like, why do we want to see these people live or not? Right. Um, same deal. You know, Spielberg was onto something and even like to a tune of like three times less monster footage in Jaws. Um which showed, you know, only 3% of Jaws actually showed a shark. And it's a movie about a shark, right? Um, pretty unbelievable. But what I, I love about these two, you know, uh, analogies, I guess, or, or representations of, of good storytelling is about that feeling, the buildup, right? As Hitchcock said, it's not about the bang. It's it's about the anticipation. Or as Maya Angelou says, you know, it wasn't, it's not about what you said or what you did. People are going to remember how you made them feel. We know from studying, you know, storytelling, they're 22 times more memorable than information and they're more profitable. So I'm not going to go into Welcome to Wrexham. If you've seen it, you know, but I think you're about to hear a lot more about this show and about the team, which is remarkable because it's a fifth tier soccer team in somewhere in Wales, a town of 65,000 people. And suddenly they are in the limelight and, uh, and, you know, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney bought the team have told this awesome uh, story. I recommend the show. Um, it hits on all the emotions and it's, it's very entertaining. Um, but you know, since debuting the show, they've seen a huge lift 600%, probably more in their merchandise sales and even viewership in some of these tournaments that that team plays in are up like eight or nine X from the previous season. So it's pretty remarkable. It's so storytelling, not only, you know, do we, is it more memorable? It's actually more actionable too, right? So let's agree. Storytelling, I hope we can all agree here, also good. And we might need less shark footage or product footage, right? Um, to actually sell a feeling. So, all right, we've established you can get 40% more revenue through personalization, six to nine X lift on your sales and viewership through storytelling. These are economic multipliers, right? And if demos are so important and they're that, that, that moment when it, uh, prospect sees themselves in your product, what happens if we could get more personalized, more story-driven demos? Right now, what's holding us up, there's three approaches that we are seeing. You know, I think y'all are familiar with the, the end-all be-all demo video. Like you probably spend a lot of time to try to try to muster up that perfect demo video. Not easy. You have to wrangle all the different product cats to get their their way in and their their own screen footage. There's always that like sort of gatekeeper who's who owns the the demo controls, the environment, all the permissions. But you get there and you make something that kind of appeals to everybody, like Tom Hanks, you know. And but like you know, because it has to be that one size fits all, it's a little more like this to some people, right? It's like, eh, yeah, cool, you know, all right. And then worst of all, your UI team tells you, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to roll out a new button color like next month. And, and then suddenly, you know, what's the shelf life on that, on that video that she just made? Um, because they're so challenging to, to go back and edit, uh, the personalization can be challenging, but of course, like video storytelling, they go hand in hand. So that's, that's a plus for videos. Product like growth is a is a new um, is a new trend in product marketing for sure. And I think if you've ever like signed up for a, a demo, you get like a 14 day trial, you know, that kind of 
uh, thing we're doing that currently I'm, I'm exploring some project management tools and um you know at first like you get this initial buzz like it's sweet i get to like click around and do all this stuff it's like when i took my daughter to go get you know some self-serve ice cream it's sweet until you start to like realize like i have no idea what i'm doing why am i clicking these buttons you know like my hands are all sticky and not to mention that like there's content kind of in there but it's also sort of like it's like this barren environment and i don't really see what i'm supposed to i, I don't see my like the big vision of what i could do with this you know so personalization kind of it's got my name and my my company is in there but like as far as the storytelling goes i think it's way too open to interpret and I, for that reason i'd say you know no thanks um you know, lack of story um finally what we're probably most used to is the seller guided tour again like this could be a, a smashing success if you've got, got that killer you know demo seller uh but uh, in the wrong hands, you know, it can kind of fall victim to that point and click feature tour, basically, you know, where it's like, all right, it's like if Jaws was, you know, two hours and seven minutes of pure shark footage, it was like, okay, you know, uh, a little less dramatic, and you're kind of lacking on that, like art of the possible. So personalization, you'd have to go bug the gatekeeper if you did need to change up an environment. Um, and then as far as storytelling goes, Wild West, crapshoot, you know, strikes and gutters. So I want to introduce um, a term that I heard, I think back in 2015, uh, when I first went to an onsite event um, as a presentation designer and worked with this incredible team uh, at Oracle Marketing Cloud uh, for this big user conference keynote. Uh, they, were, they kept referring to these things uh, called vignettes, and I'll, I'll show you what they were talking about. So again, this was a big opportunity for them. Oracle Marketing Cloud had just rolled up about um, maybe close to like 10 different startups. And we're trying to figure out how do we position all these tech tools to our audience of, of modern marketers and like in a way that gets them excited to cross sell and upsell uh, and like explore and adopt more of these features uh, without overwhelming them. So they had about 60 minutes on stage to roll out and, and get people hyped up about this this new marketing cloud suite. Um, what they did was, I think, I think, uh, best in class, I, I'd say it was just like a remarkable job appealing to the to the audience. So they presented the modern marketer as the hero, which was great because the people in attendance would have considered themselves modern marketers. And then they pointed up to this bigger sort of narrative, which was to keep winning the undecided customer, which was awesome. And then after lots and lots and lots of distillation and working with the many, many product teams, they decided there's about four different chapters that they can talk about that point to that greater narrative. And so I'll give you a little, you know, glimpse at like, what did one of those chapters look like? So they had this optimize the customer experience chapter. Um, and we, what I loved about it was it was purely story driven and it was like kind of fictitious, right? Like, or it was, it was made up. We made up this brand called Denim Durham with this marketer named Ann, and she's got this customer named Greg. Greg goes on a date. He's going to need some skinny jeans because he's a hipster at the time. But this demo was all about showing how this tool, this part of the, the marketing cloud could adapt to a, a consumer's like changing behaviors. And so, you know, the, the date goes well as the story went. Greg ends up moving from, from Austin, where he's a hipster, to Denver, where his, his, his new girlfriend likes to hike and does outdoor stuff. And so he, this was all about his changing behaviors. And so afterwards so that was sort of the demo actually is like we showed through screenshots and sort of like powerpoint animation as opposed to a video we did have video in some places but we kind of showed okay here's the setup here's how you know Anne can do this one thing and here's why it matters to both greg and Anne, and it's got to be win-win right and so they kind of recapped sort of like the here's what i just showed you kind of thing so massive keynote uh you know 130 slides in all um but we broke it out into these four vignettes. And each of these vignettes had its own beginning, middle, and end. As we know, in great storytelling, you got to have a beginning, middle, and end, or a why, like why should we care? Why, you know, what's in it for us as the audience? We're rooting for this person to solve this problem, right? And then we show the little demo in the middle, like the how, okay, great. And then at the end, you show why that mattered. Like, why is that cool? That's the payoff. Um, vignettes, uh, according to Studio Binder, I like this little definition. They can exist within broader stories, and then multiple vignettes can ladder up to something uh, support this like more cohesive whole. So again, what I liked about each of these vignettes, they all follow this same structure of a beginning, middle, end, but they all did have like 
they were they were supporting this greater overall narrative. So what I loved about this product keynote is that it hit storytelling for sure, right? Like the structure was awesome. It kept the presenters on narrative and they were selling more of the dream uh, rather than features by introducing these characters and, and you know, introducing their desires and their goals and, and what stood in the way of those. However, you know, how could we, we weren't really sure if this could be personalized, to be honest. So, um, but the good news is Chris Lynch, who was sort of the story architect at on that project, ended up getting sort of catapulted from that um, momentum. He took on a chief marketing officer role at Cision and he came there and decided, you know what, like the demos, they could use a lift. Uh, they were kind of snoozers as he said it. So we're like, hey, could we could we apply this demo vignette thing into um, into like a sales enablement sort of scenario? And that's what we set out to do. And, and here's what we'll show you and see how it, how it kind of works. So step one, you know, Chris and his team of product marketers got into some uh, storytelling, right? And, and bust out the script, thinking about their personas and their, some of the pain points that they run into and develop this really awesome product demo, which was really like their goal was to show you a campaign from start to finish and how their decision communications tool could, could be utilized like from end to end. And so... Uh, with any great story, we're going to first set up the why, like it, when you're in the audience, you want to see someone that you can resonate with and relate to. So we had this character who was the director of corporate comms, uh, for this, this travel gadget company onward again, fictitious for a designer like me, it was super fun. Cause we got to like make up all these like new brands and stuff like that. That's fun. But she has a goal. She wants to drive awareness through a product. Now we're going to like sprinkle in some details, sort of like what I'd call like the we see you deets, right? Where it's like, all right, um, you we can sort of show what you're feeling by, you know, just like adding some of these little uh, contextual uh, devices that might make you want to pay more attention because like you can kind of feel yourself in that same scenario. And same here, like where we present some of her challenges, uh, which was, you know, her CMO wasn't exactly sold on the, some of the data that she was presenting to support some of the spend. And so, you know, the whole point of this is here, we're setting up the overarching narrative. How can Nadia use these um, sort of like three components, identify influencers, craft campaigns, attribute value to support that overarching narrative of, you know, like sort of the end-to-end -end solution to do, uh, to drive like sales through, through uh, comms and campaign management. So, um, what we did again, a, a beginning, middle, end for each of these three vignettes that are introduced, um, where we set up sort of the why, the you know what's the goal that Nadia is is getting at. Then we show how it can be done using the tool, and there's other like sort of players involved. Uh, but we, there was we kind of spurt, uh, added in videos as well as screenshots that we animated, uh, and then the payoff. So like, why was that cool? What did they do? What why is it meaningful to to uh, Nadia on her? you know, job to be done mission. Again, so three campaigns, very much a consistent structure. And I think that's probably the power of why this allowed that team to scale their message. It's hard to scale a story with consistency, but as Jen Jones, the CMO of Commerce Tools and another amazing product marketer uh, pointed out, you know, like Jen knows that if she can deliver um, consistent format, then the sellers aren't asked to remember the the facts and all the details but rather they know like they, they get familiar with the consistency of that delivery and that's going to keep them on track right so this is where it got really cool and we're about to wrap up sadly because I, I i love geeking out about this stuff but hopefully we can talk some more about it but um this is where it got really cool right so we built this b2c version with nadia from onward travel gadgets but on the same chassis with like minimal effort we swapped out a few images we swapped out some of the storylines in details, we were quickly able to cater and make this B2B version of the same product demo, right? Different storyline, some different details, but really like minimal effort to tell a more tailored story to whoever is being pitched. Then thanks to Google Slides, PowerPoint, tools that we already know and love that are editable and accessible by everyone um, so that they, you don't have to like log into some new demo environment we were able to make it all editable, right? Like, so just like Dale Carnegie said, you know, our name is important to us, but what what else is important to us? What could be modified in a pitch without having to, you know, bug the demo guardians? Um, 
if you can make these like little editable components, your sellers could potentially then go in, make slight tweaks to the somebody's title or the industry. And, and then they've got this scalable asset that they can make uh, edits to for better personalization. And so we're seeing them stay on track on narrative, like without weaving around too much. Cause that's what Slideware does. It kind of, it kind of guides you visually, but also now they're able to enhance things with the power of personalization, right? These are modular, editable. They can kind of like use what they need at the time to deliver a far more personalized experience. So looping all around back to this idea, strikes and gutters, hits and misses, right? Uh, with the demo. If we think of the demo as like a bowling alley, your sellers, they're chucking balls down there. They're, they're trying to trying to knock down revenue. Uh, the, the, you know, the different colors and, and weights of those balls, maybe that's the, the ability to personalize. But the coolest part for me is when I think of like bowling with those gutter guards on, you know, like you're going to get more consistent hits. You're not going to get as many whiffs. And it's those demo vignettes. The structure gives those narrative guardrails to keep the message on point and, and uh, delivered consistently. So if you're wondering like, where do we start uh, with demo vignettes? I think the first point to go place to go is to your personas. Like, Understand who you're, who is using your product, who benefits from it, from that product market fit, list out the, some of those different goals, what stands in the way, and then map back to the product uh, benefits. And from there, I think that's really where you start like crafting these like super fun stories and just have a blast with it. That's what we did. And I think it's, it, it might not be the end all be all replacement for a demo, but if you do want to get like paint that art of the possible earlier in the funnel, um, this is a, a fun, creative way to introduce what's possible with your product and how it could be used by, by uh, your potential customers. So, hey, and then if you get stuck, talk to Ghost Ranch. Again, we nerd out on presentation stuff. Um, so if you do need to, uh, to bring some more creative juice into that presentation once you've written it, that's what we do. So Molly, I'm going to give it back over to you. I think I went a little over, but uh, if we have any other time, happy to talk through some Q&A. Yeah, awesome. No, just I was just about three or four minutes over. And for our first one, I'd say that's pretty, pretty good. So um, go ahead. If we've got questions about anything, demos, vignettes, storytelling and presentations, throw them in. Um, I will go ahead and get us kicked off your mic. There's um, um, people are being shy right now, yeah, yeah. but um, feel free to hang out as long as you want. We'll go through a few questions so we can actually um, get through them. But um Amen. I know you did this presentation for the PMA summit in New York, and I wonder why, why this topic is so prevalent in the work that Ghost Ranch does working with presentations day in, day out, and how impactful you have found this topic for people. Yeah. I, I thought it was fun to hear the, some of the reactions from like talking to a bunch of product marketers in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the reason it touched a nerve is because maybe it's a little, maybe there's a little one, um, lack of clarity as to who owns the demo. Should it be product management? Should it be like the CTO? Should it be product marketing? Mm -hmm. Often I see them collaborating on it. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder if that's that's part of the reason. But yeah, I think, I think often it's just, you know, you open up the product, that's an easy way to do it. And certainly people like a lot of marketers we know have written some sweet, very good scripts and, and uh, with great training and great sales, sales enablement, that can be very successful too, for sure. Um, but again, I think I think the reason we like to talk about it is because it's you can get really creative with, when you uh, there's just more creative ways to do it. If everybody's doing the same kind of product tour, is is there opportunity for you to stand out a little bit? Yeah, totally. Okay, now we've got some stuff in here. Um, yeah. Robin Martin is asking, how do you decide how to chunk the vignettes different ways? Yeah, I like I like <laughs> so the rule of three or fours is great. Um, I think the big idea, the red thread, probably Robin, like it, it probably starts with that that distillation and trying to find what is the big overall all narrative and then most likely like if you're if you're creating a couple different versions um i think you you probably just try to um try to distill things down into the ones that make sense that matter to those uh that very like specific persona for that particular mm -hmm. demo uh presentation um it's a good question. I think, I think I'm sure it's just a, a matter of, of, uh, poetry, you know, like distillation and, and, uh, practice and, and more practice, but depends on the audience too. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Molly? Um, 
Well, I no, I agree. I think depending on if we're always talking about audience forward, it's like you got to start with them. And then um, I think depending on what story is going to be most impactful for them, which feature yeah. to really emphasize, I think that makes the most sense. Um, there's quite a few more coming in. So I'm going to fast yeah. forward to another one. Um, Patrick Howe is asking, what about demos that might just be verbal and not have video or maybe a visual component? So how to personalize. Um, yeah, it probably still goes back to um, like there, there's this book, um, Steve, the presentation secrets of Steve jobs, highly recommend reading it. It's by Carmen Gallo, Gallo, who writes like that. Um, he, he studies like Ted talks and stuff like that. But in, in that one, that's where you really see how Steve jobs was able to, uh, sort of like plant that big idea, the, the, like, what can you do with this thing? like and why does it matter so like think of like a thousand songs in your pocket right Mm -hmm. if you think back and just really work on the big overarching narrative like yeah you should probably be able to just have an elevator pitch for like why your product is cool like what can it enable to paint that greater possibility kind of kind of like discussion just Mm -hmm. start with those like i'm sure you've had those those conversations you could think about like some case studies right like what if customers already done that's amazing like that's best practice that you want to see more customers doing and just talk about that stuff and maybe something will will bubble out of that so i think it's yeah. probably just about talking about best best in class use of your product and maybe uh vignetting the talk track right different yeah. script different opening depending on yeah. uh, who you're talking to um Thank you so much for the good questions, you guys. Feel free to hang out again as long as yeah. you want. We'll just get through these. And again, the recording will be sent out. So um, Andrew is asking, did you use section Zoom slash links to allow the audience to have input into what order they, uh, they prefer the presenter to cover the, in the content? Oh, um, I love that. Sort of like the non, um, non-linear presentation. Mm-hmm. We You could 1,000% do that with these, uh, I, because again, like those anchor slides, Andrew, with like, if you've got four chapters or three vignettes, you know, like you could absolutely cater it to them and, and kind of like hyperlink those into whatever section of that, um, demo, uh, yeah, they'd like to actually talk about. So I think that's an even better way to, to customize, right. Is like, all right, like you tell me what you want to learn about. And, Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely more audience centric. Um, That's a great question. Yeah, I love this too. What are some tactics tactics to drive the seller guided adoption from AEs who have found their own thing that is mostly that is mostly kind of working? Seller guided adoption. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah that's a tough. That's, no, that's really good. I like it. I'm, um, geez, like I would probably talk to our own AEs, and I think getting sort of letting them talk amongst each other, uh, I, I I hope would be a, a good place to start. Of course, like re- watching um, watching sales call recordings, that kind of stuff, you, you can learn so much from, but hopefully they can watch each other's and then maybe something like uh, just round tables um, because yeah, and Wes, I don't know if I'm answering correctly. I, I really like that question. And I'm happy to, to uh, pick it up afterward as well, but um, I, I think it would be just about like, yeah, getting them to talk to each other about what's working or what's yeah, where they're seeing like actual like ears perking up when they're talking about specific user stories, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the kind of testing maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lindsay is asking, how do I emphasize storytelling of the features over the feature themselves? Like get to more of the feeling, I think is what yeah. uh, it's getting to. I I think like, I think the buildup is fine. <laughs> you know, just like in Jaws, I, I think like the anticipation, um, you just don't need you know, 30 minutes worth of, of a product tour, you can actually have three minutes worth and just like, really like, you could even just have a conversation about like, what's, you know, what's bothering you and what are you running into? And then before you even flip into some of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I think, I think just thinking about, um, even like beginning, middle end isn't always perfect, right? It's more, if you think more about like build up, lead up, and then a payoff, like, it's got to be about that anticipation of, and then like reinforcing why something is cool. So the other thing that Steve Jobs did so well was repetition. And, you know, like in that, that iPhone keynote in 20, like 2007, I think he, he kept saying like, we're going to change the phone, you know, today, Apple reinvents the phone. Um, and like, when you hammer that point over and over again, like 
that was in every headline from every journalist, you know, like it's sticky that way. And so, yeah, trying to think about not only um, what is the story, but, you know, kind of sweating, like how you deliver it a la like Chip and Dan Heath made to stick, you know, think about something that is kind of catchy the way that you say it um, and the way that you sort of like craft that big idea narrative could pay off when it comes to them, like actually remembering what you said too. Totally. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to grab one more, um, yeah. just as a perfect segue to wrap up too. Um, but anonymous, we have an anonymous one here. What are some easy ways to personalize demos if I'm not a designer? And I want to let you answer this and then segue into a next offering that we have oh, for sure. patient thinking sure. <laughs> um, to close it yeah. out. Here. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, I'd say, well, if you do have access to someone who can like help you rig up a PowerPoint template or Google slides template, like all of the stuff I showed you, even those images, like, you know, Steve jobs on our team, so good and, and others. Right. But like, so good at adding instructions to say like, all right, right. Click on this image, replace it with another one. So, you know, there's like free online, like stock photography resources, like unsplash. Um, and probably even right within PowerPoint, I think you can like swap out icons and stuff like that. But Honestly, the simple little touches, like just changing some, like somebody's title to make it feel closer to home with whoever you're pitching. Mm -hmm. That's like, an, that's low hanging fruit in my opinion is, is like, just make them feel like this is me that I'm, uh, this is the story of something that could be me. Right. And um, yeah, so maybe, yeah, maybe you don't have to be a designer. Maybe it's just more about the story that you can influence. I would add that um, we just covered this on TED, TED Talk, David J.P. Phillips, who is a Swedish uh, presentation um, scientist, basically, has a really, the TED Talk that made him viral is how to avoid death by PowerPoint. And he has some really low bar um, pieces of design, like just baseline things that you, easy transitions and easy adjustments in simple, simple design that will make it that like that much more impactful. So there's not just like, words and bullets all over the slide. So that's a good one to check out. And if you are interested in that, we've got some more things to plug just coming from the Storyteller Study Club. Go ahead, Mikey. Can save the date. I will be going through the seven basic plots, which if you're familiar, Christopher Booker wrote a huge uh, novel covering how each story across millennia <laughs> uh, fits into one of these seven structures. And Mikey and I went and, you know, studied these structures and we really not only enjoyed just figuring out, nerding out about storytelling, but figuring out how those structures can help presentations, help your projects. And so um, I will be going through those on May 31st um, as our next Lunch and Learn. But the week before that, we will be going, to, we will be introducing our first ever um, workshop, presentation design for the non-designer. So again, if that's something that you're like, I'm really interested in this and this would be so useful to me, but I don't have design chops. Mm -hmm. This is a super juicy um, two hour workshop that Steve Sheets, um, Mike, I think you had a Freudian slip earlier, called him Steve Jobs. That's how important he is to our <laughs> team. Um, is our technical director and truly presentation guru will be spending in deep, deep time. Um, and you can really get some one-on-one -on -one help with um, yeah, just getting baseline more comfortable so you can be like, yeah, let me create more vignettes for my demos to be that mm -hmm. much more comfortable. It's cool to see all of Mikey's transitions, but it's great to like put them into practice, right? You're like, how, how the hell did you just do that? More yeah. transition, like there's a lot that PowerPoint and Google Slides are capable of. You'll be surprised. So the basic, oh, you're right. this was, this was like built for that anonymous question, like yeah. easy ways if to personalize you, demos yeah. if I'm not a designer. And if you've got that imposter syndrome, let us demystify yeah, it. Low hanging fruit. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining everyone. Um, ne the first ever lunch and learn. <laughs> Not quite 28 minutes, but we're working, yeah. we're working our way down there. <laughs> um, keep on pitching and um, please reach out, follow us at presentationthinking.com. Um, you can find us on all the socials, find us on LinkedIn. Um, and if you have if you have any questions, um, yeah. my name is Molly, and you will be getting an email from me with this recording later. So <laughs> feel free to reach out. Thanks, Thanks Molly. Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah. Keep on pitching. Yeah. See ya.